tattoo shop and you know how that looks trippy i've been seeing all over the old facebook uh the story about parker and the dc ido level five wow there's you know so many theories as to why uh he blew that sub so easily and yeah it it's a lot going on there I see theory after theory, and I, I don't even know. I mean, I watched the video. I saw some things that wasn't right with it. And people talking about airspace. I don't really believe it had a lot to do with the whole airspace thing. Um, subwoofer companies, you know, they put down a uh, recommended, you know, for the average Joe that's, you know, going to play your regular rap music that's not rebased and stuff like that um there's more to it than this um the first thing i really noticed in this video was uh he you know kind of did a long burp at like 50 hertz and if you go back and watch you'll see what i'm talking about because that 50 hertz burp it sounded in the video like you could literally hear the coil slapping. I mean, you know, it's just a long 50 hertz burp. And I think that, you know, with box tuning and everything, uh, he definitely went outside of uh, enclosure tuning on that 50 hertz burp. I mean, that was terrible. Just the way you could hear, I mean, it sounds like you can hear coil smack. So that probably, you know, damaged the old former in the coil. And then, you know, he did a, a really a long 40 hertz tone. And, you know, he said he did that to other subs like the Def Bunch outside of the enclosure. Um, maybe the DC's the only one that he really put through that test in the enclosure. And what difference does that make? Well, one big difference I see that making is with that motor mounted in the enclosure, uh, even though the, the woofer is trying to cool the coil down by, you know, moving, what you're, what you're going to wind up with is it's recycling hot air from the enclosure back into the coil. So it's not going to cool as quickly as it should. You combine that with a damaged coil already from smacking on the 50 hertz tone definitely wasn't good for it but you know what it survived it it survived the old uh 40 hertz one one and a quarter minute how you know he ran it over a minute but i think the death of the sub it wasn't anything from dc whatever you know we kind of determined that 50 hertz was going a little outside of enclosure tuning already but he just kind of like turned around after he did 40 hertz for that long and really didn't give any cool down time on the sub. And he's like, let's do 45. And, you know, it, it smoked into that 45 hertz tone, which I think he was on the brink right there at 45 hertz. I think he was kind of on the brink already of being outside of the, the tuning. And you combine that with, you know, the, the 50 hertz, it sounded like the sub was bottoming and damaged the coil former. Uh, and, you know, the 40 hertz one minute tone, which really, I mean, he was saying that it was getting stinky. I mean, he literally like, he's like, yeah, it's getting stinky here. But yeah, that just turned right around and just do a 45. 
And if y'all know, a quick way to cool a sub down is play a low frequency, you know. The lower frequencies make the sub move a little further and it really gets that airflow through there. And 40 hertz, not so much. I mean, you're not, you're not doing a whole lot of good things to cool a subwoofer at, at 40 hertz. I mean, they, they cool this, but the higher you go in frequency, the less it's gonna cool. So what we have is we have a subwoofer that's already hot. I mean, hot with a potentially damaged coil. No cool down time. It's like, yeah, let's just go straight to another tone that's gonna cause the old sub to move less and heat the old coil up even more. And I think it's just, that's what happened. I think the majority of it's coil heat. Yeah, most of us, uh, me, the guys that watch my videos, whatever, and I'm not, I'm not like, you know, a guru on subwoofer specs, what happens. I, I know enough to get by, but um, it, it was nothing that DC did. You know, it literally, it's all coming from, it's a tone. I mean, a tone. That 3000 watt rating RMS on the back of that sub is for people that play music and demo. Uh, and us demo guys, you know, myself and you included and you on the total taking crap, you too. Um, us demo guys, we play music, so your subwoofer's like, and then it'll pause in the track, and then it'll do it again, you know. I mean, most of us never just get somebody inside of the old demo vehicle, and they're like, hey, let me throw on a 30 hertz tone for you, buddy. Which would be better, it would be a lot better than a 40 hertz tone because of subwoofer travel, you know. Um, I mean, crawl in and look at your subs and, you know, play like some... 50 hertz music, see how much they move, and then throw on the old 20 hertz and, you know, see what you get there. You're gonna get a whole lot more movement out of the old 20 hertz, guaranteed. And that, that helps keep, you know, the old coil cool. This is what I think happened, guys. I don't know. I mean, I ain't, personally, I don't have anything against Parker. I know a lot, he's catching hate from a lot of the community now. I mean, he does videos for our entertainment and, you know, he, he might have had a couple things go wrong in, in the video. I think my man Parker should have, uh, you know, gave the old uh, DC a good 10, 20 minute cool down because I tell you, that generated a whole lot of heat doing that one minute 40 hertz in the enclosure. Do I think the, the things would have been different if he had been just sub outside of the enclosure? Definitely. You know, because then it would have been sucking in cooler, cool air and then pushing out the hot and sucking in cool. But with it being in that tiny enclosure with the port on there, the majority of the air that it's using, you know, I mean, it's pushing air out the port and sucking air in, but you're keeping a lot of warm air in there. And I just don't think it did any favors to the coil. But that being said, would I still run DC any day of the week? DC's a great company, you know? I just think that it was bad test conditions and a couple of mistakes were made. It happens all the time. I mean, people make mistakes in their own builds and you know, it happens. Like people blow amps by just doing stuff stupid, you know, letting wires touch, whatever, we, we've all been there. So yeah, that's just my thought on it for today. And I figured, hell, I'll do a video on this because the Jeep still was sitting miles from my house and, uh, I just been at this point i've been putting thought in on my new build and uh yeah i got some some news to share on what's going on with it but not this video but anyway guys oh yeah we had the shop like totally it's finished now you know all of the uh i think one of the last videos i did in here in the old tattoo shop we were uh going over it was like in the middle of being remodeled and we kind of got the remodel done uh just some, I designed that <laughs> for Fantasy Inc. But anyway, guys, peace out, base on, and don't be afraid of DC.